Okay guys, there's my little paint bench. This is actually the uh, spray gun I'm going to be using for this job. It's a fan tip uh, touch up gun. I have some cone tip touch up guns as well, but I think this will be just the ticket for this. It's just a, a pretty cheap little gun like you'd get at, uh, well, Princess Auto here in Canada, but in uh, the US I think Harbor Freight carries the same sort of items. So I have that. This is just to um, scoop paint out of the cans if they're really full, like this one's going to be. This is the uh, the red it, that goes on the bottom of the card, and we're doing a black on top. So this is what I'm going to be using on the, uh, the car. Limco Supreme Single Stage. I've used this paint a, a fair bit before, and I really like it. Like it's made by uh, BASF. It's a good brand. Yeah, these are just my... Uh, paint strainers over here and uh, this is the epoxy I'm going to be using and then uh, out here I've got the light on under the plastic now just to light up the front of the car I've uh, encased my toolbox in plastic and then uh, I didn't want to put all these lights up and blind myself while I was masking and blind out the camera but now that I'm done and ready to spray I want to be able to see really good so I got these uh, low down lights here just uh, kind of ghetto style temporary lights and uh, that lights up really nice in the lower jam area and both the uh, doors back here I'm actually a little on the dark side you can see how dark it is all in here that's pushing it I was thinking of getting another light here but I'm getting a little Low on plugins. Same deal over here. I hung one up here. So I'm just about ready to uh, spray here, but I'm gonna go around uh, and blow off the car really good again. Like, careful not to hit the masking too hard, but I'm just gonna blow everything off and give it a final wipe. I'm just getting the uh, bay up to temperature here. I, uh, I'm going to aim for 25 degrees, so that's around uh, 78 degrees, I guess. Okay, so I'm just going to be tacking off here. So this is just basically a sticky piece of cheesecloth, and you rub it lightly on all the surfaces. It's the final step before paint to make sure that you don't have any debris on the surfaces. See, just like cheesecloth, basically and you can flip it around as needed and you can save them and, and reuse them depending how contaminated they get normally what I'll do is if I'm using this for top coat right now next time it's going to be for primer and after that it gets tossed go over everything here it's just a really quick step and I'll show you what's on the uh, rag when we get all done here Alrighty, so I'm all done with that, and uh, you can see there's a tinge of red there. It takes any micro dust off that's left on the surface. So, Just wanted to talk a bit about my uh, air setup here. So I just have this pretty basic uh, air dryer here, and it works really good. I never get any water through my line, and then I have uh, a regulator. You can have a regulator on your gun as well. Um, it's just nicer to have it on the wall because uh, when you have it on your gun it adds that extra length to the bottom of the gun and when you're spraying things like rocker panels and stuff that really gets in the way. So this is separate. This is for my shop line and this line here that comes straight from the air compressor that hose and then feeds into there and then this hose comes out. The uh, green one is a super flexible one paid a bit more money for that just so I'd have that flex when I'm painting and it also has a high flow coupler on it because if you're using a high volume low pressure an HVLP gun it actually uses up about 8 CFM um, and uh, that much doesn't flow through a regular coupler so it will end up uh, I mean it will work uh, I know a lot of painters who spray with regular couplers but uh, if you uh, use a gun back to back with a high flow coupler versus a low, you will be able to tell the difference. And I've uh, I've seen tests conduct it with actual flow meters to prove the theory as well. So it's not just a myth. 
But my main reason for running that extra line, aside from having the special coupler on the end, is that it's not getting used all the time, and that keeps the uh, outside of it nice and clean. But it also, if my uh, air compressor is pushing any oil or anything through the lines, this line is being run only when I'm painting. It's not being run for hours on end running air tools in the shop here. I'll show you my air system here quick. So my air system here, it might look a little bit uh, backyard or whatever, but uh, it works good for me. And I have, uh, the deal is I have these on separate breakers. I only have two um, 40 amp 110 breakers in my shop here. So having one big compressor is not an option. So this is my main compressor, this little Makita here, and I just love it. I've had this thing forever, and it's a beast, and uh, it'll run really cool and quiet. So I like using it most of the time. When I need more air, I fire up this little one. It works fine, too. It's just it's louder, and uh, it uh, heats up a lot quicker and stuff, so I kind of limit my use of it. Okay, well, I'm just getting to mixing the paint up here. Well, primer actually, epoxy. So this is uh, one part of this to two parts paint. And it's fairly separated because it's uh, been a good while since I sprayed with it. You want to make sure that you don't have any contaminants on your stir stick, of course. I'm just going to wipe mine off with wax and grease remover before starting. If you have old primer or something that's been sitting forever, it can be a real pain to get stirred back up. This isn't too bad, but uh, it's definitely going to take me a minute here. Okay, so how I like to mix my paint is I just pick any scale on here that I like. And you got all these and... You know, they have all the formulas up there, so you can just fill it to the, the one, the one, the one, you know. Or whatever the number is that you want to go to. It's a, it's a painter's cup. It's made for mixing paint. But, I mean, you can use any any unit of, uh, of numbers on here that'll work for your needs. Like, I don't want very much, so I think what I'm going to do is come up to the two on this scale right here with the um, the actual epoxy and then the uh, the activator will go up to the three so that'll be two parts of epoxy one part of activator gives me my three parts and it will give me about a uh, little over three ounces of paint I'm just uh, gonna be doing little, wherever I broke through the bare metal is the only areas that I'm spraying epoxy on here so we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm just using my uh, scoop here so that I don't make a mess. Okay, so one scoop equaled one of those. Oh, there I'm jumping already. Uh, I went past the two a little bit. Or did I? No, it's past the two. Okay, so let's find the scale that I did go to the two on. Right there, that one's actually bang on the two, so we're just going to go to the three on that same scale. You want to be as accurate as possible with this stuff. So we're going to stir that up really good now. Stir everything longer than you think you need to. Okay, so now you want to have a paint strainer. You can buy these, you know, I've seen them at my local hardware store even. I got these from a paint supply, but I guess wherever you buy your paint will have them. I have used this gun before, but if you just bought a brand new gun, you might want to clean it before you use it. They often have assembly lube and stuff in them. And you just put your strainer in there. I just got this dirty old uh, paint cup here. I'm going to drain the uh, air compressors out before I get going. So I drain my compressors pretty often, so you can see there's just like half a cup of water in there. Okay guys, well I've got uh, fresh air coming down in there, that's blowing positive pressure into the building. It's going to force all that paint over spray that way, out the door. I have big fans up on the roof and on the floor blowing all the air out the, uh, the big main doors. So 
So I've got no heaters on right now, just to be clear. The heaters that you seen on earlier, they're all turned off right now. They won't be turned on until after I'm done spraying. I don't know how well you'll be able to hear me. So I've got my uh, regulator set at about 18 PSI for this little gun. Seems to be spraying pretty nice. So I'm just going to be spotting in. I'm not going to be doing everything. Just the areas I broke too. It's just like where the spot welds were. I broke two candies. Little uh, on the go action there. You can see I'm just, most of that's just spotting and it's laying in there really nice. Covered by the bumper anyways, I'm just getting a little more epoxy in those seams. Keep the rust away. Okay guys, you can see I've still got my mask on, so it's going to be hard to hear me clear. I'll just give you a little overview of everything. Basically, wherever I saw bare metal, I just put a spot of paint. Everything's cleaned up now and ready to go for the color coat. And we got to wait about half an hour before we can do that. Okay guys, it's showtime. I'm doing the final the color now. Guys, it's tight here, man. It's hard. I don't really have enough room to be doing this in here.
What do you think, guys? The floor is sticky, so it's loud when I walk. Now it's just one coat so far. It's looking pretty good. It's laying down nice. Now I'll just be spraying the lower half now because the upper half is going glass. That's all the uh, paint I ended up having left over, just half a touch-up gun full, so I'm pretty happy with that. I hate wasting paint, so I'm just going to clean all this up, and I'll kind of show you the process. It's pretty much the same for a big gun, too. I'll show you again when I get to spraying with my big gun, but uh, for now, we'll just uh, show you what's up with the touch-up gun here. We'll put some fresh stuff in there. And then uh, I'll squirt it through. Kind of preliminary there. Definitely, the sooner you get on this, the better. Those little brushes you get in the throat of the gun with. Of course you want to wear splash goggles when you're doing this. We will ultimately take that air cap off the end there. But it actually works good to clean it with the flow from the gun here. In a properly clean gun you shouldn't be able to see what color you last sprayed with it. Yeah, I've seen painters that don't worry about it. They got paint all over the outside of their gun, but they're normally not the good painters. Okay, so we got the uh, air cap off the gun and in there, and we're just going to soak it overnight. And just, um, you want to clean in there, so same thing, just get your gun wash flowing out and then take a brush to it and brush in there real good and then I'm gonna leave some gun wash sitting in there overnight too just in the throat of the gun I'm just really happy with uh, how these jams turned out and how this paint all lays down there are a few places I got solvent popping that's just kinda the nature of the beast because uh, of the way I'm doing it here with the doors opening and stuff I really had to get carried away trying to jet paint in places and I just I got it a little thick in a few places as a result you can see I've made the decision to put a full layer of epoxy on here and, a, and two full coats of paint and I did the th same thing across the tail pan even though it's uh, hidden behind the bumper that's just for additional corrosion protection with all the work I'm putting into this car, I really want it to last, so I'm taking a lot of extra precautions, and I'm actually going to be uh, painting and undercoating all underneath the car here as well before we're done. Okay, well, we're back here with the PT project. I actually got Nash out here with me today, and um, it's been a while. I meant to get it done in the fall, and it's kind of sad over the winter. I had done... Uh, the jams here, this is all going to be in one video, but there's a huge time gap for the work actually getting done. So I'm just getting back at it. I did have all the upper part prepped, and all I got to do is mask it, and then I can spray the black on the upper part of the jams. And then from there, I just have to um, unmask it all and prep the uh, outside, and then I can spray the outer body. The outer body, all the body work's done, the primer work, everything is mostly sanded and prepped. It's just going to be these areas where I oversprayed on the edge and the, the final sand. But one thing, because I sprayed the doors on, I was hoping to avoid this with the touch-up gun, but you can clearly see in there that I've missed large areas. And, uh, you know, as I said before, I should have really taken these doors off, but now to uh, try and correct this issue, I've uh, prepped this area up, making sure there's no shinies where there was paint that ended up in there. 
Uh, so now I'm just going to take my touch-up gun again with the door now in the closed position so I can fully get at this. I've got it all masked up now, you can see, and uh, so we're ready to spray. I'm just going to put a single coat down here, and then I'm going to pop open the front doors and do the same on the back door. You can see I got that really nice in there now. I wasn't worried about runs or anything. I just hosed it in there, but doesn't look like there's any runs anyway, so this paint's pretty forgiving. Okay, guys, I'm going to be spraying here right away. i got to kind of hurry. Everything's timed out here with the, the heat and the ventilation and whatnot. So here goes. Hey guys, this is just the first coat. You can see it's still a little transparent there. Okay, well this is the uh, second coat drying and I do need to put a third coat. In fact, when I do the outside of the car, I believe I'll be putting four coats of each color. Just based on the coverage I've seen here in the jams. I did only put two coats of the red, but I was going over red, and in the few places where I had to spot some uh, epoxy in, you can actually see that if I shine a light on it. So on the outside, that wouldn't be acceptable. In the jams, it's okay. But the upper jams are getting three coats to make sure that there's no red showing anywhere. And uh, I'm not going to put a third coat on these areas, so they're going to look pretty dull when I'm done. It's the next day here, and the good news is my camera lens is actually solvent proof. I just uh, cleaned it off with some lacquer thinner, and it seems to be nice and clear now. It wasn't terribly hot in here overnight. It was only like uh, 15 degrees Celsius, so got the space heater going again. Give it a bit more of a bake before I unmask it, because it's hard to unmask these areas without bumping the paint. I did uh, peel this little area last night just to get a side by side with the red. That's how the two tones going to be. So excited about that. I think that red really pops. Everything turned out really good. I, I love this paint. This uh, Limco. It's, uh, it really lays down nice like overnight as it dried. It, it just turned out like glass. Look at that guys, it's just like glassy smooth. I really like this paint. So what do you guys think? Is that pretty awesome? I think that red really pops myself. I'm very happy with it. One thing I'd like to do, because my mom actually has uh, wheels that really show off the brakes. Unfortunately, this just has drum brakes in the back, but still... I think I'm going to take that drum off and uh, blast it up and paint it red. And same thing up here with the caliper. I'm going to have to get the uh, caliper off the car and the caliper bracket and uh, clean them up and paint them red. And I think that'll look really sharp then. Thanks for watching Matt's Garage. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And have yourself a great day.